Live from Studio B, here's your moderator. Christine Good evening and thank you. Welcome to a WATD political forum. The election race is for the 6th Plymouth District. That's Pembroke and Hanson in precincts 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 of Duxbury. We've got incumbent Democrat State Rep Josh Cutler here tonight. Good evening. And he is, good evening. He's facing a challenge from Republican Tatiana Semirag. Hi. Hello there. I'm your moderator, Christine James, and I'm joined by Monday Night Talk host Kevin Tachi. And reporter Charles Matthewson asking questions. Timing you all is Sandy Rollick, and we're joined by media partners Whitman Hansen Cable, providing video coverage as well as Pembroke Town News. Thank you so much tonight. Now, for those of you that listen to WATD on a regular basis, you know on these political forums, we always use the same format. We have uh, asked the candidates to have prepared opening and closing statements ready. The opening, no longer than two minutes. The closing, one minute, please. Then we ask a round of questions from the reporters and then have a lightning round. During the regular portion of the questions, the answer is one minute. The lightning round, it's either yes or no or one or two sentences tops. That's what we ask uh, people to have ready. If there's enough time, sometimes we'll have candidates ask each other a question or two. We try to be very strict with the timing constraints. So when Sandy holds up the green, that means go. When you see yellow, that means you have 10 seconds. When you see the red, that means stop. I give a five second grace period. If you're still talking, you get the bell. I like to use it. I use it a lot. And if you're still talking, we cut the mics. Radio, we gotta keep it moving here. So. I tell people this is the way we do it. We try to keep everything right on time, and we appreciate everybody following the time as well. Now, just a few moments ago, we chose opening and closing order out of the official WATD newsroom koozie stand-in since the original one disappeared at the end of last election season. And we're going to begin with Tatiana Semirog, and then we're going to go to Josh Cutler. And a reminder, we have a sponsor this evening. This political forum is sponsored by Stuart Painting, encouraging you this fall to take pride in your vote and in your home. Visit StuartPaint.com for special home repair and painting offers and to schedule a free estimate. Let's begin the evening and say hello to Tatiana Semirog. Hi, thank you, WATD. I'm not a professional politician. I'm a mother of three girls, a widow, a cancer survivor, an entrepreneur, and an inventor. I'm also a refugee of the former Soviet Union. My parents brought me to America in 1988. My family survived horrible persecution under communism, including labor camps, executions, starvation, and death. That kind of silencing and oppression that I lived through in my birth country, I now see creeping in here. The labeling, bullying, debasing, marginalizing, and ostracizing is happening all over the country to people who don't agree with the left. It has happened to me as well when I became an outspoken critic of my opponent's policies. My good name has been dragged through the mud and smeared. I am yet to hear a denouncement or an apology from my opponent for what the people closest to him are doing to me by attacking my heritage, past suffering, and, char and character. I have spoken to so many people in the district who are telling me that it's happening to them as well. The people of Pembroke are eager for his denouncement of his business partner Becky Coletta's racism when she called the entire town racist and she's afraid of, I quote, white men with guns. I know what oppression is because I lived in tyranny and what my opponent has done by establishing a KGB style apparatus in all three towns that silences and suppresses free speech is all too familiar to me. People are afraid for their livelihoods and their names to be destroyed. It's quite an operation where political operatives tied to my opponent dig up and smear anyone who opposes Mr. Cutler. All this actually terrifies me as I know where it leads to. I am running to stand up against this oppression to give people hope and courage. Our freedoms are under attack by the kind of socialist agenda my opponent has been voting for. His votes to defund our police, increase our gas tax, all while voting twice to increase his pay, speak of a radical lefted, leftist who has no business representing this district. His allegiance to Ed Markey and the Green New Deal and calls to fully disarm our police threaten our very freedoms. On November 3rd, I'm asking you to vote for me. Thank you. That was the opening statement, Tatiana Semirog. And now the opening statement, Josh Cutler. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Josh Cutler. I'm the state representative for Duxbury, Hanson, and Pembroke. Thank you, WATD, for hosting this forum. Thank you to my opponent for stepping forward to run for public office. And thank you to our audience for tuning in. It's been the greatest professional honor of my career to serve as your state representative and advocate for our district. That's because the South Shore is my home. My family first moved here about 75 years ago. My grandfather had just finished serving in the Navy in World War II, 
Together, he and my grandma started a business in Duxbury and raised a family. They made it a home. Now it's my home, and it's your home. We love it here because of the natural beauty, the historic charm, great schools, and vibrant local businesses. We love it because it's a great place to live, work, and raise a family. But there's no doubt we're facing some challenges. This is an unusual time in our nation's history. We have a public health challenge, an economic challenge, and also a political challenge. Meeting these challenges and working to solve problems is what motivates me every day. And while things in Washington may seem hopelessly divisive, here in Massachusetts, we've forged a path of consensus and cooperation. That's the same philosophy I bring to my work. My mom's a Democrat and my dad was a Republican. They both believed in the value of public service and hard work. And they taught me that fixing the problem is more important than fixing the blame. It's been a successful formula. As your state representative, I've helped secure millions of dollars in funding for our district and delivered resources to help our schools, seniors, and small businesses. I helped pass Nikki's law to protect the disabled from abuse and the Energy Save Act to reduce energy costs and protect our climate. Just as important are the many constituents who've reached out to me during this pandemic. After all, helping people solving their problems is what this job is all about. Tonight, I ask for your vote again so I can bring experienced leadership and a record of delivering for our communities back to the State House. Working together, we'll overcome these challenges and emerge stronger than ever. Thank you. Thank you. That was Josh Cutler, his opening statement. Now let's go to Kevin Tachi, the questions for the candidates. Kevin? Thank you, Christine. I, I think the, the, the theme with a lot of our political, with a lot of our political forums that we've had here in WATD uh, has been this particular issue, uh, the call for police reform or law enforcement reform, uh, which actually sparked the creation of a bill that the state legislature uh, debated recently. Um, I asked both of you. Uh, says that it, it would it's take reallocate, funding away. Yes, it's reallocating funds from our police department. And our police departments in these three towns are stellar. Stellar. So I don't know what model he, he was using when he was making his decision. He should have talked to our ch police chiefs who all would have told him not to do that. Uh, and I've spoken to all of them. They're horrified. The qualified immunity that would be taken away from them would, would literally uh, have the potential to cost them their lives. But would you be against certification for police officers like you do with most professional I, industries? I would want to hear a lot more from our police chiefs, from our police departments, all across the state b before making such a decision. And as you know, when this was passed, no experts in police were, were, were uh, contacted. They did this all on their own on Beacon Hill without uh, any experts, without any hearings, without uh, any public weighing in. You know it hasn't been signed into law. It's in, right now it's in committee. Right, I do. Okay. Yes. I, I relent. Okay, thank you. There were several, just factually, Miss. Well, Mis misrepresentations we'll get to that because we're going to go to Charlie okay. now. Did you want to follow up with this line we, of question? We have uh, discussed this in every political forum, and my role is usually to ask the follow-up question. There are three parts to this legislation. I have not found defunding as a part of it, but the main three parts are Certification, certification, licensing, is, as we do for plumbers, uh, education, training, and uh, the, taking away the ability for police to sue. Uh, which of those three do you think are important, Josh? Sure. Well, they're, they're all important. Let me just be clear on the outset because my opponent continues to misrepresent this. Uh, the House bill, the bill that I voted for, that I support, does not defund the police and does not eliminate qualified immunity. Okay, those are facts. Uh, if, if someone wants to point to me a part of the bill where it shows that they defund police, I'd be happy to, to have that discussion. It does not because it's not in the bill. Uh, in terms of your question, uh, Charles, thank you. So absolutely, I support all that. We, you know, we need more, we need more training. Uh, we have great training. We have the Municipal Police Training Commission. Uh, but what the state auditor found in her report is that it's not consistent across the state. And while we have great departments around here, that's not necessarily the case everywhere. And not everyone is getting the same training. And so having consistent statewide uniform training processes is, is, is needed and it's necessary. And frankly, the police that I talked to support that. Um, and we've actually dedicated additional funds for that exact purpose. Uh, last Last term, we dedicated extra funds from the uh, new revenue stream from rental cars to go to the municipal police training fund. This bill actually adds to that, and I see I'm out of time again, but I'd love to come back to this. Tatiana, 
do you approve of the training or the certification licensing uh, the qualified um, immunity? I believe I already answered that when I said that I want to hear from more experts. And uh, when I say experts, I don't mean lawyers or politicians. I mean police chiefs and other police uh, law enforcement experts when making a decision about uh, certification and qualified immunity. And no, I do not believe that qualified immunity should ever be taken away from our police officers. Um, I have talked with police chiefs and operations people in police departments, and they all want certification, every um, one of them. I, I see that you're helping my opponent at I'm the moment. I'm not helping your opponent. Good I'm telling you, because I'm, I'm out I'm, on the street. I'm telling you that I've also spoken to them and to their police uh, and to many, many hundreds of police families, and they all feel the way that I do. About certification? Yes, certification, qualified immunity, and defunding. So I'm here to tell you what the district is saying to me, including police officers but who want to hang up their uniforms because of the vote that my opponent took. Okay, let him finish asking the question. But defunding is not part of the legislation. Yes, it is. It's reallocating. Okay. Well, we're reading two different bills. Okay. Do you want to ask a follow-up question? Right. Yes, go ahead, Josh. What? Well, I just wanted to point out I have a letter here from the Mass Chiefs of Police Association asking for a certification. Me? Let asking let for speak. a certification process. Uh, the Mass Sheriff's Association endorsed that. That has been broadly supported uh, across the board and uh, a certification and licensing system. Uh, you know, I, I just, I don't know where to begin with the falsehoods. Um, we're talking about the process. There were 800 plus pieces of public testimony that were received during a public, a virtual public hearing, three full days of floor debate, 217 amendments. I've been in the legislature for, for now seven plus years. There's never been, issue, been an issue that's gotten more attention than this issue. And rightfully so, it's an important issue. We need to get it right. I'm committed to that. I worked during the House floor debate to make sure that we strengthen the process, the due process protections for our police officers. I worked, I was in constant contact with all of our police chiefs. I was in constant contact with the mass chiefs of police. Um, you can look at the email. So I think this is an important thing to do. Um, I, I think this deserves a little bit more time. Hopefully we can come back to this. But I, I think you know it's important that we, we, we can have just a, a difference of opinion, can but the facts are the facts. All right. You can can I answer minute. that? Yeah. I, I appreciate everyone you've talked to, but have you talked to a family at a door uh, whose wife, the police officer's wife, starts crying and saying she, how much she fears for her husband's life? after you took that vote. And that has been the story. I've counted now on 8,000 doors in my district, and I can tell you, this district is full of police families, and I'm hearing the same thing over and over again. All three police unions in my towns, the Hanson, Pembroke, and Duxbury towns, voted to endorse me. Mass Cops, whom you've quoted, voted to endorse me. Mkufu voted to endorse me. And the endorsements keep coming and coming. So. Um, you can keep, call it what it is, but the police know. The police officers and the law enforcement uh, across this district know what you did. Okay. Can, I'm going to ask you both a follow-up. Can I get a rebuttal to that? Up. I'm going to ask you both a follow-up question. What do you find, Tatiana, is there anything right about this reform bill? At all? Do you agree with anything in the le in the legislation? I don't. I don't agree with how it was done. Uh, it was a knee jerk reaction right. but what, from beginning you, to you, end. Do you find anything right about it? No. That's what I'm asking. Okay, so no. Okay, no. Josh, what's wrong with this legislation? What's wrong with the House bill? Yes. Uh, I think overall it's a good bill. I think there's some changes that, that uh, were made during the House, during the, the floor debate that I advocated for, that I actually, amendments that I filed that were passed. To, to, uh, one of them was to create a minor complaint process so that we don't bog down the system and having every little you know, complaint against a police officer go to this new commission. So that was something I passed. It's now in the bill because of my efforts. Uh, I think you know, it's important we get this right, and I think it's right that we're spending but what's, six... But what's wrong with it right now? Like, I don't think... I don't think... I, 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 it, it's... The things that my opponent is talking about are not in the bill, so it's hard for me to argue with that because simply there's nowhere in the bill that it says defunding police, and I would just ask anyone, I would ask my opponent if she keeps making that claim to please point to me where it defunds the police in this bill. I'd be happy to talk about that, but she hasn't been able to do that. Okay. You're listening to a WATD political forum here. It's the 6th Plymouth District. You've got the Democrat incumbent, Josh Cutler, his Republican challenger, Tatiana Samarag. I'm going to turn it back over to Kevin Tachi if you want to continue this line, this topic, or switch over. I, I think we'll let it simmer just for a little bit before we go, we go back to it. Okay. Uh, there are so many other issues that, that are paramount when it comes to running for office and when it comes to the state legislature. 
Let's not forget, we're in the middle of a pandemic, folks. Uh, and the economy and employment numbers suffered greatly during the pandemic. Uh, depending on whether the state sees another wave of COVID, uh, should the state's legislature consider using its uh, built-up rainy day fund to offset the state's growing deficit or provide assistance to businesses that are affected by the virus or unemployment aid to those industries like the food, like food and uh, the hospitalities? Uh, we'll start with Tatiana. Absolutely, to answer your question. And I'm happy to hear that our governor had the foresight to have a rainy day fund, and boy, uh, do we need it now. Uh, our small businesses are suffering. My district here is uh, full of small businesses uh, th throughout all the three towns, and uh, I've been in touch with many of them. They all need help. Uh, unemployment as well. I, you know, I talked to my uh, the school bus driver who drove my daughter, and it's just the saddest thing that she lost her job. Uh, why don't we help uh, folks out more like with that? We also need funds for uh, substance and alcohol abuse that we know is now on the rise due to this pandemic. So I, yes, my my response is we definitely do need help in all of those aspects, yes. Okay, so I just want to make sure I, because I, I asked in regards to the, the rainy, do we, do we want to pull towards the, the deficit? Because mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you can do both. I know we have a growing deficit right now, right. a budget deficit, or do we put our, well, our resources towards helping those people, uh, to the people who are uh, struggling right now, or the industries that are struggling with some kind of well, a pro, uh, series of programs? Well, hopefully, hopefully by, uh, pouring money into our small businesses, we can create jobs and get, take care of that deficit. Okay. Uh, same question to you, Josh. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, and I, this is something that I, you know, I sit on the Ways and Means Committee, so I'm very familiar with, uh, with this. We fortunately have a, a $3.5 billion stabilization fund, which the governor, working with the legislature in a bipartisan way, have, have invested in over the years. And, you know, and I would say it's raining now, and we need to, use, to tap into that fund. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we just got some updated news about our budget shortfall. Uh, it's actually a little bit rosier than it maybe it looked like about uh, several months back. Our, our, our shortfall is, uh, experts say, between 1.6 and up to a high of 5 billion, which is a, a significant amount of money, obviously. But that's significantly less than what we were looking at um, just a few months ago. So that's good news. Um, the, the, obviously, we're going to have to tap into our rainy day fund. Uh, we're still waiting to see what happens with the federal stimulus package. You know, we're still optimistic that they'll be able to come to some agreement on that. That would certainly help us here in Massachusetts. If that doesn't come through, then we're going to have to make some tough choices. Uh, but certainly using our, rainy, our stabilization fund is one. Um, hopefully, we can come back to the second question that you asked. Uh, we just recently passed in the House an economic development bill that, bill that creates a new uh, revenue stream for restaurant relief. Uh, I'm out of time here, but uh, perhaps we can do a follow-up. No, I just, what, what's the bill uh, in so we, entail, so to speak? Yeah, so uh, we passed an economic development bill that had a lot of good things in it, one of which was uh, legalizing sports wagering here in Massachusetts to create a new revenue stream. Uh, a portion of those revenues would go to a new Restaurant Relief Act, because we know that our restaurants are struggling. Um, it would create a distressed restaurant fund to help with rents and payments. Uh, so that's one way we can directly help some of our small businesses that we know are struggling. Um, just backing up in terms of COVID, and we've done a lot to try to help our small businesses, and that's one of the things, frankly, that I spend most of my time on, besides helping folks with uh, unemployment issues, is, is working with our small businesses and, 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 and listening and hearing what's going on. Um, trying to, we, we, we delayed uh, some of the business taxes for a number of our small businesses. We made it easier to change regulations to allow um, um, outdoor seating, uh, delivery for, for uh, drinks. Um, we've done a lot of things. Uh, we delayed our income tax uh, filing period. We've done a lot of things to try to make it life a little bit easier for our businesses. We realize they're struggling. I'm a small business guy. I, I you know, run a small business, ran a small business before I came to the legislature, and that's one of my, you know, the, the most important issues for me is helping our small businesses. Oh, and I almost made it. But I, <laughs> I did. There. Charles Mathewson. Continuing with issues beyond police, uh, one of the three towns is Duxbury. It's a coastal community. Uh, how do you think climate change is impacting the community and what have you done in the legislature and what would you do in the legislature to uh, ease that? Tatiana. Yes, um, I am very fortunate to live in Duxbury with our pristine and gorgeous uh, uh, coastline. And uh, I love the fact that it, this town took active steps to preserve 
uh, our habitat. We've got uh, the beautiful plover birds that are highly protected um, every every year. Uh, I see their nest, them, them nesting. It's it's a beautiful thing to see, and I I, I love initiatives like that. So uh, on my end, I would support uh, to continue uh, creating things in legislature that would protect, continue to protect our um, coastline, absolutely. In the case of sea rise, mm -hmm. much of Duxbury would be underwater, uh, especially the, the marshland north of the beach. Um, would you do something about sea rise and do you support uh, the idea of climate change? Well, I'm not God. I, I, I don't control the levels of the sea. Uh, however, if uh, human intervention would be possible to save our communities in any way, I, I do, I do remember, recall working for Senator Brown and the whole Marshfield seawall being eroded and destroyed, and I, uh, we worked hard to uh, bring in the National Guard and help with that. So uh, it is a problem, and whenever humans can help out and intervene with climate change, then uh, yes, I would, I would support that. Josh, what would you do about climate yeah. change in Duxbury? So absolutely, it is an issue. Um, you know, we're facing a triple threat. We have more frequent and severe weather events. We have aging coastal infrastructure, and we have rising sea levels. Um, and this doesn't just impact our planet, it impacts our wallets too. We see it in rising flood insurance rates. I see it, you know, our, we have a great aquaculture industry in Duxbury and here on the South Shore. Uh, we see ocean, ocean acidification, how that impacts th the ability of, of those men and women to, to earn their livelihood. So it certainly is impacting us. We need a, a, a multifold approach to this that both involves mitigation and adaptation. I've worked on this issue extensively. Uh, I'm at this term proud to have been elected the House Chair of the Coastal Caucus. And I would point out that as a bipartisan caucus, I, I work with the uh, Senate Minority Leader, Bruce Tarr. He's the Senate Chair. And so, you know, we're able to, you know, from my, from my position, able to really be an advocate for our district, just not just for Duxbury, but, you know, climate change is an issue inland, in, inland as well. It's not just a coastal issue. Uh, and I've been able to use my uh, relationships that I've built and, 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 the relation, and the reputation that I have to try to advance this issue. And hopefully we can have a chance to talk about uh, my Mass Energy Save Act, which also addresses climate change and reduces energy costs. Thank you. <laughs> Just to remind folks you're listening to a WATD political forum, the 6th Plymouth District. It's brought to you by Stuart Painting, encouraging you this fall to take pride in your vote and in your home. Visit StuartPaint.com for special home repair and painting offers and to schedule a free estimate. We'll be back right after this. Doesn't taste good. If anybody needs to sneeze, cough, run to the bathroom very quickly. <laughs> like a minute. 30 seconds. Can we go, can we have another minute? See if you want. You can use it, okay. If the recall is more effective. Oh, okay. Yes, but this tastes better. Yeah. Yes, that to, uh, to tamp down the, the, the stronger recall. The stronger recall? Yes, the vapors of it. Yes. Never ending. Just like taking care of your home. I am telling this new as you're paying me. Minute 20. Thank you. Anyway, I've expunged you audacity. We're going 100% with audition. Okay. Because so audacity is just, it was so reliable for so long. You just, what are you using it on? TC or Mac? Mac. What's your give problem? Is it an op operating issue or? iCloud. Oh, maybe it's your problem. Don't you have an external hard drive? Yeah, but my two machines communicate in the iCloud and applications aren't supposed to be shared, but Audacity was. So it'd be at one spot and it would say you already have Audacity running. No. But are you, you going to pay the subscription? I have it. Really? What do you mean? Why? Are you paying just for Audacity? Audacity is free. I mean, uh, uh, audition. Twenty-two dollars a month. Yeah. Max deductible. Oh yeah. Here we have ten seconds. Ten seconds. Stand by. No, that's fine. Five seconds. Here we go. Thank you. 
And thank you and welcome back to a WATD Political Forum, the 6th Plymouth District here. We just left some questioning right before the break. We're going to get to it now. I believe it's my turn to ask some questions here. We will allow that. No, thank you very much. Okay. Um, Black Lives Matter has been a big issue in the last couple of months here in the state of Massachusetts. Josh Cutler, do you support Black Lives Matter yes. movement? Yes. I, I think, uh, unfortunately, this has become a binary choice between supporting Black Lives Matter and Back the Blue, and I, I reject that. I think that's a false choice. I think we can and should support our uh, many honorable men and women in law enforcement, and also acknowledge that we have racial inequities in, in, in our society and in law enforcement and in every profession, in my profession as well. So I think we can, can work on both issues and we don't have to choose one or the other, and it saddens me that Unfortunately, we seem to have come to that point of view here in Massachusetts or in the nation. Okay. And Tatiana, do you support the Black Lives Matter movement? I support our African-American communities. I do not support BLM. They are a Marxist organization. They came out with their uh, statement as a Mar Marxist organization. They're also an organization that uh, strives to De uh, destroy the family, the nuclear family. Um, they, if, you know, I'll tell you this, Christine, if they, if I see them helping black business owners, if I see them helping poor black people um, by buying, you know, paying off their mortgages or uh, helping the black community in a real way besides looting and rioting, then yes, I will support BLM. Uh, but as, a, as an organization, I can support black people without supporting BLM. And yes, uh, Mr. Cutler, it has become uh, BLM, uh, Black Lives Matter versus Blue Lives Matter because BL Black Lives Matter makes it that way. They hate cops. Okay. Uh, let's go back to Kevin Tachi. You want to follow up on this line of questioning or? No, I think I want to go to Charlie, uh, to uh, something that I share with Charlie and that oh. is water. Yes. Now, I was going to ask that, Kevin. The, no, no, no. You I'll have to step on my toes. I'll right? start, and then you can punctuate the sentence. Okay. Water is another uh, important issue when it comes to your district. Uh, the Twin Lakes or the East and West Mon Ponce and Pond have seen their share of problems. Uh, I want you each to kind of give your, uh, your understanding of the issue and the management of these bodies of water and what needs to be done to continue to... Uh, to uh, have these not only as a, a source for recreation, but if, in fact, it's needed for drinking water. We'll start with Tatiana. Yes, well, uh, from what I'm aware, we've had quite a drought this summer that's continuing on even today. And uh, I know my roses are wilting. And uh, the water bodies, Pembroke has so many lakes. Uh, actually, Hanson does as well. It is a concern. Um, algae is growing. And uh, whether it's uh, due to the stagnation of the water, due to uh, increased water, uh, decreased water levels, or maybe some mismanagement at the dam, I'm not sure. I haven't studied this uh, matter particularly well, but it is a concern for me, absolutely. I, If elected, I would love to learn more about it, tour the facilities at the dam, and uh, learn more about it so that I could help in any way that I can as a legislator. Same question to you, uh, Josh. Thank you, Kevin. So uh, I do know something about this, and I've, in fact, done a number of uh, positive steps with my colleagues to address this. Uh, I believe the question was having to do with Silver Lake and, and water management practices with vis-a-vis uh, -vis the city of Brockton. As we know, 1964 law allowed uh, diversion from Silver Lake, which impacts Mon Ponce at Ponds. Uh, working with my former colleague, Representative Calter, we helped to revive the Plymouth, Central Plymouth County Water District Commission. Uh, I was waiting for that question, Charles. I didn't get it, but I was ready. Uh, we, we helped. <laughs> You got the whole title out there. Yes. You're eating into my time, Charles. Um, to uh, to revive that commission, get it back up and running, which it has been. I know they're working on developing a water quality management program. Uh, also worked with DEP to get them to issue an administrative consent decree, which they did in 2017, which now said that, that the city of Brockton cannot divert uh, water when the cyanobacteria blooms are, are high. Um, I think we still have work to do. I think um, we have, I have a great relationship with Mayor Sullivan in Brockton, and I think uh, we've worked together at the State House, and I think you know, that's going to be important as we try to manage this, and it's not something where we're pitting the, the uh, cities against the suburbs. We can work together and try to solve this. Uh, I missed a bit. Okay, because I took away from some of your time, would you uh, help the city of Brockton become part of the MWRA? or 
alternatively work with uh, the former naval air base development. Yes, absolutely. I mean, if, you know, we can't force them to do, to do that, but certainly I would absolutely support that if, if that was their choice. Uh, I think also the desalinization plan, you know, trying to utilize that better would be a, a helpful choice. Um, and as I said, you know, this can't be something where it's, it's an adversarial relationship. We have to be able to work together and live in harmony here. Um, we have concerns about how the water usage, they obviously have a need for water. We support that. Um, and I think some of the steps we've already taken uh, have helped put us on a better path than we were a number of years ago, but certainly we're not, we're not out of the, the woods yet. We didn't really get a chance talking about the drought. Uh, unfortunately, we're in, a, we're in a, a, a level three drought here in, in southeastern Massachusetts. And so that has a whole other uh, set of issues that come with that. We obviously need to be uh, addressing our water usage policies. I have a legislation called the Mass Energy Save Act, which helps to tackle energy efficiency and reduce water usage. Um, and hopefully we can talk about that. I, I see that I'm, I'm just about out of time. Tatiana, because Brockton is taking the water from the Silver Lake towns that include Pembroke and Hanson, would you help ease the process for Brockton to become part of the MWRA? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not too familiar with uh, that whole issue, but whatever, I, ca I can assure you that I will work uh, for the balance in all communities, Pembroke, uh, Hanson, Duxbury, and Brockton. Thank you. Hey, just to jump on, uh, sure. I'll stand on, the, on water. Knowing that Brockton is the manager of, of the, the Twin Lakes and Silver Lake, I think one of the issues is, is when other communities uh, in the South Shore that are, that are abutting the pond will observe a water ban, the city of Brockton sometimes has not in the past. Uh, can any legislation do you, uh, that you can think of that could be put into play that it'll be, it'll be even the, the, the playing ground when it comes to situations like the drought that we're in? Tatiana? Yeah, that sounds like it's uh, something that should have been uh, done, and why hasn't it been in the eight years that uh, you've been there, Mr. Cutler? I believe the question was directed to the city of Brockton. Was, yeah, it's so I don't, I don't represent it's the city of Brockton. 1964, Brockton has been able to, well, I want to say probably beyond that, but, right, but they've had affecting... the rights to, but it's, 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 it's beyond Mr. Cutler and, and, and any other. But now is the time to see if we can put something in place. What would you do to put legislation in place to make sure that if one community is observing a water ban, that all of them do? I'm not a legislator yet. Like I said uh, to, to Charles, uh, once if I am elected, I will study this matter and I will take pr uh, necessary decisions. Uh, absolutely, there needs to be a balance. If Brockton uh, is being give a free pass while our district and our towns are suffering, that's not fair. We need to be uh, uh, all, all on a level playing field. Water is uh, quite a precious commodity that needs to be shared equally. Mr. Cotler, same question. What can be done as far as legislation that hasn't been done as of yet? Well, I think you know, the drought is going to kind of force our hand in some cases, Kevin, because you know we, we have a, a, a drought for the, for this entire region, including Brockton, and so that requires that we have a you know year-round water conservation programs. Um, obviously, you know again, I, I don't think this I don't want to make this an adversarial thing with the city of Brockton because I, I want to resist that. I think we we can work together. That's my philosophy about a lot of things, and I think you always get further that way. Um, but in terms of the drought, you know, and coming back to the issue of water, um, you know, I, I've worked during my time to, hard to, to be an advocate for our ponds and management. I've been able to get funding back for Pembroke Ponds, for the Mon Ponsa Pond, uh, Wampatuck Pond, got funding for Duxbury to get uh, a new weed harvester so they could uh, clean up uh, Island Creek Pond without having to use herbicides and chemicals. So these are important issues, obviously, is my, I, I agree with one thing my opponent said, our ponds and lakes are, are, are an important part of living here on the South Shore in our communities. We recreate in them, we, you know, we enjoy their water, and we need to do everything we can to protect them. If you look at my track record, I've got a lot of things done from the administrative consent order, funding for the Central Plymouth Water County Commission, funding for my own towns, and you know, I'll bring that continued kind of work collaboratively to the State House. We got a couple, uh, actually we got quite a few uh, emails from listeners who called, who sent questions into this forum with issues, and one of the issues was transportation. And this uh, listener said, COVID, "Covid gave us a brief break from dealing with the T. Something has to be done. What ideas do you think will help steer Massachusetts into the future and update public transportation in Boston, especially with these cuts that we're hearing that may be coming? The commuter boat may be cut. Big cuts in the train schedule, buses. Some people uh, on some of these modes of transportation that." 
that's the only choice they have. So, Josh, what needs to be done? Yeah, no, it, it is, uh, and I, you know, do drive into Boston still, and it, even now that the, the, the commute is not great, <laughs> so I can only imagine when, when the economy uh, is, is stronger. Uh, certainly, we need to do more. Uh, I think if you look, you know, in terms of revenue sources, how can we fund more uh, transportation, both public transportation and, and, and uh, roads and bridges? Uh, I think the millionaires, the so quote unquote millionaires tax, which is coming down the road uh, next uh, year, will be on the ballot, uh, which would uh, add a surcharge for those people earning over one million dollars with with those funds dedicated only to education and transportation. I think that would be a key source of revenue if that were to be approved. Um, we obviously need to invest in our in our transportation system. We can't just ignore it like we have for too long. Um, and uh, I think that would be a key way to do that. Obviously, you know, I'm a big believer in it. Even if you don't take public transportation, it impacts all of us. If you get on the Southeast Expressway and drive and you know, you're know you taking an hour and a half to get to work, that's impacting your quality of life. And it's because our public transportation system, we haven't invested in it, we haven't kept it up, that we're seeing those kinds of of, um, so those kinds of issues. Thank you. Same question, Tatiana. What needs to happen with public transportation? Looks like it's getting worse rather than getting better. Well, I'm glad to hear Mr. Cutler say that the, these issues have been ignored. And my question is why? Why that in uh, all your eight years that you've been in office, these issues have been ignored? And now all of a sudden, oh, we need to do more for transportation. In fact, uh, another... Uh, it seems like your response uh, for fixing any problems with that, that involve money is just, let's just tax uh, more. You just passed in March uh, a gas tax that would raise our gas by uh, 20%. And let me tell you, this community of Duxbury, Hanson, and Pembroke are quite upset, feeling betrayed about it, because uh, especially Hanson, uh, came out strong in 2014 against any tax increases. Uh, it was the top town in the entire state to do that, and that is in your district, and you still voted uh, to increase the gas tax, and uh, the folks are feeling very, very betrayed. Okay, and 30 seconds the answer, say, what, what do you, you think needs to be done with public transportation, you specifically? I, I don't have all the answers right now to, to lay out uh, in literally a minute, but I could tell you that raising a gas tax is not one of them, and uh, uh, raising taxes on millionaires is not, it shouldn't be another one. This, this issue of transportation has been ongoing for so long and people just get taxed and taxed and taxed and it still keeps going. When is it gonna end? Kevin Touch. Did you want another 30 seconds? Uh, out of fairness, yeah. Okay. Uh, so first off, the, the gas tax has not increased. Uh, the gas tax, as I uh, checked today, is $2.11 a gallon. It's down almost 20% over a year. And in fact, compared to when I was first took office, it was, it's down 40%. It was $3.53. It was $3.53 then. So uh, the gas tax has not gone up. Uh, this Earlier this spring, before COVID, I did support an increase of gas tax of six cents, okay, not 20%, six cents, and would have delivered $950,000 back to our district for, in Chapter 90 funds for roads and bridges. That's a pretty good deal. That's, that's, that's cost effective in my point of view. Okay. Did you want another 30 seconds, Tatiana? No, I'm okay. okay. Kevin Tachi? Recent campaign yeah. literature featured an illustration of, of the representative as a puppet to the House leadership and stated that voters in the district have lost their voice through this, um, through uh, Rep. Cutler. Well, Rep. Cutler, I ask you, uh, have the residents in your district lost their voice at the State House? Are you still an effective legislator? <laughs> Kevin, absolutely. Thank you for bringing that up. You know, I, I saw that mailer. You know, it, um, I think, first of all, I have a very good relationship with the, the Speaker of the House. He's come down to our district. He's been down here in Pembroke. And I think that, that pays off, you know, when it comes to securing funding for our district, reducing the burden on, on taxpayers here in our district, my ability to work with, with the Speaker, and frankly, work across the aisle as well, work with Governor Baker and his team, uh, pays off for our district. Um, so, you know, I'm my own person. There's plenty of times when I've disagreed with the Speaker on things. Um, and, you know, but I think the important thing is, is you know, we have a... a we don't do things the way we do things in Washington. We try to find consensus and cooperation here in Massachusetts, and that means working together and solving problems. And you know, I think the speaker does a very good job of that. I think Governor Baker does a good job of that. And, and to, most often, we actually try to come together and get um, iron out our differences and come up with a, an idea that everybody can live with. And so, uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm flattered, frankly, to to uh, to have that uh, come out. Uh, I think the speaker's doing a great job. I think the governor is doing a great job, and uh, I'm proud of who I am and my ability to, to deliver for our district. 
And just in full disclosure, I received one of those in my mailbox. I, I do live in the district, so I was quoting from what was received in my mailbox. Tatiana, looking closely at your campaign, to me it appears your main issues are protecting law enforcement and reducing tax, taxes. If you will, share with me another, another important issue or issues in your approach to dealing with them if you are or you become an elected legislator. To dealing with what? Uh, I said, share with me another important issue. So I understand that taxes and law enforcement mm -hmm. are primary for your campaign. Right. Give me another issue or two that um, you are knowledgeable on and how you plan on dealing with them as an elected official. Right, well, uh, I think for not just me, myself, but for this district, what is important. And uh, I've asked folks at the door what is important to them. Uh, again, I've been to 8,000 doors by now, and I can tell you that they all feel, you didn't give me a chance to respond to uh, your question to him, but they all feel like their voice has indeed been, for, been forgotten. Uh, he does vote 98% time with the speaker, and he has br br uh, brought Boston politics into this district that has been independent-minded since the Civil War. So uh, for him to say that he's proud to, that he's so affiliated with the speaker is kind of a shame. I'm appalled by that. And let me tell you, his constituent uh, constituents are as well. Uh, they elected him on his promise of being a moderate, and he's just been siding with the speaker over and over again. Okay. But I'm going to ask you, and if I can give her another 30 seconds, mm -hmm. give me another issue other than um, defunding police. Other or, than attacking me. Yeah. Give me another issue that is a pertinent issue in your district. Because your people have been attacking me, sir. Just ask the question. Yeah, another pertinent and if you're not issue. Being addressed, let's try to another get pertinent it issue that you that you uh, are uh, knowledgeable about, that you have a plan to to take care of, whether it's schools, whether it's Chapter 90 money, you pick it. But what, what else What else does your All campaign right, I'll about? I'll tell you, uh, thank you, Kevin. So one of the issues, again, that I meet at the doors is people have lost hope. Uh, people are afraid of speaking their true mind. Uh, I come from an oppressed society. I have been oppressed as a little girl growing up in, in, in uh, Russia. And let me tell you, I'm seeing that happening here. People are afraid to put my lawn sign because a friend of Mr. Cutler got a text message uh, from him saying, how dare you, uh, calling him horrible names. Did you want any other Because he questions? put my lawn sign okay. up. Okay. Charles Matthewson, question for the candidates. Hey, let's delve into uh, immigration. Uh, do either of you support what has been referred to as sanctuary cities? How do you feel about uh, driver's licenses for immigrants, et cetera. I'll just leave it open. Okay. Tatiana, as I'm, an immigrant. Yep. As a legal immigrant, I came here in 1988 as a refugee uh, legally and uh, took advantage of the American dream. I can tell you that uh, I do not support sanctuary cities in Boston or sanctuary states for the entire state of Massachusetts. It is dangerous to our communities. Uh, and as a widow with three little girls, I wanna keep my community as uh, safe as possible. Uh, so I oppose driver licenses for illegal immigrants as well. Here's why, uh, again, it's a safety issue. They, uh, they need, uh, how can they possibly uh, get driver's licenses without cooperation from the federal government, without running who these people truly are? They, uh, and uh, if we don't cooperate with the federal government, we cannot possibly give them uh, driver's licenses. Josh, open-ended immigration. Yeah, no, okay, uh, Charles, I, so I don't, I don't support those either. Um, I, I do think, you know, it, it does concern me to hear this sort of fear-mongering fear about immigrants. Um, you know, I don't like to see that. I think we should be a welcoming community. Uh, I haven't supported, uh, it's come up a couple times, I have not supported the driver's license bill uh, or the so-called sanctuary city bill. There's, there's a, something called the Safe Communities Act, which I think is sometimes uh, associated with that, which there's some parts of that I do think are, are important, you know, such as uh, having a due process for everyone. I think everyone who comes to this country should have that. So we don't have people who are victims of crimes or witnesses to crimes fearing to come forward to, to, to share their stories or domestic violence victims who, you know, don't want to report the violence. Uh, I think if you look at the, you know, the ability to uh, contact tracing gets impacted by if we people in immigrant communities 
communities are afraid to talk about you know, their contacts to uh, it hampers our ability to do contact tracing. Uh, so those are the kinds of things I think I would focus on in. You know, there, it gets a little bit into the weeds. There's something called 287G agreements, which uh, we have here in Plymouth County, which I think are, uh, are appropriate. And I've had a lot of conversations with our sheriff, and I think that's something I'd love to talk more about. <laughs> Any Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about uh, gun laws here in Massachusetts, some of the toughest in the country. Do you think they're fine the way they are? Do you think they should be lessened? Do you think they should be increased? What do you think about gun laws, Josh Cutler? Sure. I think we do have very strict gun laws here in Massachusetts, and I, you know, I've, we've, uh, in my term, we've, we've done a couple different pieces of gun legislation. In 2014, we passed a bill to, uh, to give, uh, for the first time, give police chiefs discretion on FID cards, also added an appeal right, uh, so-called so suitability right, uh, and really focusing on school safety and mental health, and, 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 and you know, that was a bill that really was a good example of bringing people together. That was a bill that was actually endorsed by the Gun Owners Action League and also Stop Handgun Violence, which almost never happens, and so we brought those groups together. Uh, but in 2017, we did a ban on bump stocks. I supported that. Um, you know, I think you never say never. If there's an issue that comes up and we need to deal with it, then we should take a look at that. We should always be willing to relook at our laws and see if we can strengthen them in some ways. Um, but I don't think, you know, we, you know, I'm not someone who's anti-Second Amendment. I think, you know, we need to respect that as well and to respect the many people who, um, who, who, who do do that. And I'm, I'm a member of the, you know, local Rod and Gun Club, and I have my own license to carry as well. Okay. Tatiana, what do you think about gun laws here in Massachusetts? Are they okay? They need to be less? They need to be more? I think they need to be less. I think we're too strict on our gun laws in this state. I am a huge protector of the Second Amendment, and I've been talking to lots of folks here again, and they're complaining that the laws are too strict in the state. Uh, the red flag initiative is uh, very concerning to me as well. Um, short and simple, I, we should have less control. Okay. Kevin Tauchi, questions for the candidates? You know, with the pandemic, we've kind of, we got a collective mindset where we're kind of focused on and it's paramount, but there's still a drug problem in the state. Uh, what, do you th what do you think things stand regarding the opioid epidemic and what needs to be done regarding the fight for drug addiction? Representative? Sure. Substance abuse, you know, that was the headlines for, you know, for a long time, and it's, uh, it's still a significant concern. We've seen a slight decrease in the stats, but it's still very concerning. Uh, we're seeing growing concerns with fentanyl. Um, but in terms of, of opiates and substance misuse, I think you know, we really need a threefold approach, uh, prevention, treatment, and recovery. And we've taken a number of steps on all those fronts uh, during my time in terms of prevention. You know, we, we created a Promote Prevent Commission. Our, our former colleague, Representative Cantwell, did so much great work on that. Um, supported funds for the Healthy Schools Initiative. We um, prevented the, this, this idea of doctor shopping by limiting uh, first-time prescriptions and made, it, uh, made stricter rules about doctors uh, uh, prescribing opiates. We passed the Good Samaritan Act to help uh, people who are in the throes of addiction so they're not afraid to call for help or uh, for police. Uh, in terms of treatment, we added funds for more beds for recovery. We supported the uh, creation of drug courts in Plymouth, Brockton, and Hingham. Uh, and I supported legislation to, uh, which is now law, to require insurance companies to pay for longer inpatient treatment. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. Same question. Your thoughts on as far as where things stand with the opioid epidemic and what needs to be done? Where they stand is very, very sad. We're up, uh, I believe, 18% since uh, COVID hit. It's uh, people are relapsing, people are struggling and suffering. I'm seeing it uh, in my own community in uh, um, within my just close knit friends and family kind of uh, life that it, it's affecting people greatly. And it's very sad. Uh, I think more could be done. We, we need uh, definitely more funds for rehab centers, perhaps having folks stay longer in rehab centers. Um, yeah, uh, I think we could do more. Uh, people need our help. People are hurting. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we've been focusing on the COVID and, and testing people and, uh, you know, the, the rates going up with COVID, but not so much focusing on helping people with uh, fighting this pandemic. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, the o opioid we're gonna, epidemic. We're going to we're gonna go to lightning round because we're actually been running out of time, but we could spend another hour here. So lightning round, yes or no answers or one or two sentences. Charlie, lightning round questions for the candidates. Uh, two words. Question one, yes or no. Question two, yes or no. Josh. Josh. Question one, yes. Question no. Question two, no. Tatiana. Tatiana. Well, can you tell me what those questions are? 
The right to repair is number one, and yes. then the ranked choice voting is number two. No, so yes and no. Okay. Kevin Tashi. Should wearing a mask be mandatory during the pandemic when traveling outside of your home, yes or no? I guess so. No. Uh, you have to be more specific. Should be any time you leave your house, you should I you think be if you're outdoors mask? and you're social distancing, yes or no. Yes or no. Then no, but okay. in most cases, yes. Yes or no. Well, it's not okay. a yes or no question. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying, guys. <laughs> um, county government, stay. I got to ask this. County oh, government. I've never heard you ask that. County government, stay or go? Tatiana. Stay. 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 Jo okay. Let's go to uh, let's go to closing statements. We're going to switch the order that we went to from the beginning. So we're going to begin with uh, Josh, and then we're going to Tatiana. Remember, you've got one minute. Josh Cutler. Thank you, WATD, for hosting this forum. Thank you to my opponent and to our audience for tuning in. It's truly been an honor to serve as your representative. I've worked hard to make sure that your voice is heard and to make sure that our district gets the resources we need. It's very easy to be cynical about government, to watch the divisiveness in Washington and the White House and turn away. Or even worse, to lean in to our worst instincts and think that's how politics should be. Here in Massachusetts, we found a better way. We work to solve problems and find solutions. Over the next two years, many important decisions will be made on Beacon Hill. Decisions about our economy, schools, healthcare, local aid, and climate. Decisions that affect our quality of life here on the South Shore. I have a proven track record working across the aisle and getting results. I'm running for re-election because I want to use my experience to help us move forward. I believe that working together will overcome our current challenges and emerge stronger than before. If you share that vision, if you appreciate the work I've done for our communities, and if you wish to see that continue, I would be honored to earn your vote again. Thank you. Thank you. That was, excuse me, closing statement, Josh Cutler. Excuse me, let's go to Tatiana Semerod, closing statement. Thank you, WATD. Eight years in office has clearly created a disconnect between this representative and his constituents. His true face as a radical leftist has been revealed and people are seeing the truth. His votes have brought about a lot of hopelessness and fear amidst the community. I have visited thousands of doors and have heard your voices and I'm here to bring hope. I will not give empty promises and then break them. I will stand against the tyrannical majority on Beacon Hill. I will not any, accept any form of silencing. My American dream gave me everything I have, and I'm now standing up to preserve that dream against the kind of politicians like my opponent who systemically vote to undermine it. Our excellent police departments did not deserve to be betrayed by their representative. We live in a district full of working class people that commute daily, and voting to increase our gas tax was an act of betrayal to these constituents. It's time we send a message to Beacon Hill that the 6th Plymouth District will not fall in line with their radical agenda. On November 3rd, I'm asking for your vote. Vote for Tatiana. Vote for Hope. And that was Tatiana Semerog, her closing statement. You've been listening to a WATD political forum here, the 6th Plymouth District. We had the incumbent Democrat, that's State Rep Josh Cutler, facing a challenge from Republican Tatiana Semerog. Now, this entire forum will be up on our WATD website tomorrow, and we'll have select cuts that will be played in our morning drive news selection. We've also got Whitman um, Hanson Cable Access. Thanks so much. Also, Pembroke Town News, too providing this with video. I'm Christine James, your moderator. Asking questions tonight, Charles Mathewson, Monday Night Talk host, uh, Kevin Tachi. We've got Sandy Rollick doing our timing, and of course our engineer here, uh, Larry Nelson. We appreciate you listening. Remember, get out and vote on November 3rd. Tune into WATD. We'll have complete election night coverage. If you don't vote, you don't have a voice. I'm Christine James, 95.9 WATD. Thank you for listening.